Good evening, board members. Once again, I come before you to express my concerns for the conditions of this district and the way this board is conducting business. As I've stated in emails sent to this board, I'm a fact finder and I will hold the leaders of this district accountable for their actions based on facts to ensure that our students truly have a solid foundation for a successful life. Over the past five months, I've dedicated well over 20 hours a week researching info on school boards and the duties expected of them to make decisions on behalf of the communities that they represent. During this time, I have studied the MASB School Board Resource Guide, the Policy Manual, the OMA Handbook, the FOIA Laws, the Transparency Laws, and countless other documents that pertain to the laws and policies of school board, both at the local and state level. It is obvious that there are members of this board that do not have a clear understanding of the duties that you accepted when you took over. If you did, you would not be allowing our fellow board members to set the entire board up for failure. It is as much your duty to hold other board members accountable for their actions as it is us community members to hold you accountable for, for the success of our children. As stated on my application for the board vacancy, my view of a board member's role is not to run the school, but to work with other board members to establish policy, structure, and accountability, and strictly enforce the implementation of the policy to the administration hired to do so, all while keeping the student's education and future success at the top priority. I believe it is critical for this board to inspect what they expect. It is obvious that this board is constructed of members that must have a different view of a member's role than this. There are members that feel they have the authority to act on behalf of the board, and their committees possess the power to make decisions without the approval of the full board. During my research, I have spoke with many of you personally. Unfortunately, many of them that I've spoke with are not here tonight. It is obvious that my questions, my presence, and my involvement at these meetings is bothersome to, the, to many of you. I'm not sure why, but I'm here to tell you, you've only seen the beginning. I've compiled a large list of questions based on my findings, and I will start to voice them publicly, since you've avoided addressing them or responding to, it, to the many emails that I have sent. Due to time constraints, I have prioritized them based on urgency and the importance for the future success of our, of our students in this district. My first question, what is the status of our superintendent? Why is he still on sick leave? Is he being paid? Based on his contract, which I have a copy of, it states that he has 15 paid sick days. He's been out for over two months. What's the status? Why was he issued a $2,000 check for moving expenses when he never moved to this district? Will he or somebody be required to pay that, this, that money back to the district? Is he truly on sick leave? 
Or is it just a cover-up for one of the many rumors that are running rampant throughout this district? Question two. Termination and severance package given to our elementary principal. I've heard from many people inside and outside this district that there was a monetary settlement that was agreed upon when her, term, when her contract was terminated. I have read all of the board minutes from 2014 and have studied them quite in depth. There was never a discussion or a vote by the board for this matter. This is a direct violation of, of state board policy and is a violation of the Transparency Law and the Open Meetings Act, and it could be punishable by law. Who approved and signed this agreement? I have the right to know. Do I need to FOIA that information? What was the cost that this town, that this district incurred by her separation agreement? Was that figured into our revised debt? The lawsuit, it was question number three. There's a lawsuit filed at 1121 of 2014 by the high school principal that was terminated. What is the status of this lawsuit that was filed? What are the basis of this lawsuit? What is the potential cost to this district and us taxpayers <coughs> for this lawsuit? Were these costs incorporated into our revised debt? I don't believe so. The unfair labor practice lawsuit that is pending, what is the status? It was mentioned a couple months ago that there could potentially be a cost to this district for up to a quarter million dollars for this lawsuit. Where do we stand? <coughs> Has the board or administration met with the union to try to work on a resolution? If so, once again, where do we stand? Was this potential cost figured into our debt? Overload pay, question number five. Based on information that I've learned in meetings that I've attended, we've paid out over $40,000 in overload pay for the first semester. Not $40, $40,000 in overload pay. With a potential of still an additional $10,000 that needs to be paid out. Were those numbers considered when we created our revised debt? Number six, policies. Why does this board continue to allow written policies not to be followed? The board itself is in direct violation of the policy manual. And after talking to several of you, many of you have not even read it. in our district since our last meeting. We have uh, improved school security both in the high school and at the other buildings. The hall monitors are greatly appreciated as is Officer Green. His presence can be felt the minute he walks in the front door. Mr. Rodriguez is a valuable asset at the high school. We've also hired many highly qualified teachers to take the place of the substitute teachers that we've had for some time. We have work together to find solutions to many of our past grievances. These solutions have been equitable to all parties. Still, we have many grievances that remain the mandate further equitable solutions. We're still working on them, but we are communicating and hopefully in the future we'll get these solved as well. Still, we have some problems. 
We're still running into shortages of paper, chronically, at all the buildings. We have a need for textbooks. We have a need for consistent policies governing student conduct. Cell phones seem to be a recurring problem. We have a lack of clearly defined goals and in staff input for new programs such as block scheduling. Perhaps your strongest asset, if you're an administrator here, is to ask for your staff's opinions, gain their experience and their wisdom. Then you can go forward and have a successful program with successful implementation. At the middle school, there is a need for an assistant principal. At Thomas White, there's a need for a principal. Both of these have been mentioned before. It's time to act on them. Many of these problems are caused by a shortage of funds due to state cuts. Ironically, there is a grant out there available from the state of Michigan that we have not applied for in the past. It's called the School Improvement Grant. You have that handout with the phone number on it that I passed out before the meeting. Many of our neighboring districts have <coughs> obtained funds up to $2 million to solve their problems in the academic uh, part of their district. Some of these systemic problems are due to recent cuts. We can solve them if we jump through the new hoops they've set up for us. The game has changed. The state's not playing fair. But we have to fully fund our academic needs here. What I propose for uh, this district to do is form a committee of students, teachers, administrators, and board members. Perhaps a five-person committee for each building to fill out these grant applications stating our needs and what we're going to do with the money. And then we can provide the sound academic programs that our students deserve. Are you with me? Are you willing to do that? Are any of you willing to do it? <coughs> Please let me know. I've also been we don't have time to waste. I've been to several trainings, and I have written grants for the district, so Good. I would be available. All right, I'll work with you. Thank you. with uh, Melissa 
because in our meeting we discussed uh, one a deadline where we had I believe two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars that we could use with a deadline of September of this year if we wanted to tear that building down. After that fact, we would not be able to use that money. Uh, it was also our understanding that if we were to sell that building, that the money would be used to go to Buena Vista for them to help retire their debt that they have. So it was kind of a shock when I heard that in the early morning uh, news that they had sold the old BV High School in the grounds and they were using that money to eliminate their deficit and so immediately we looked into that and we we're continuing to look in to see if that is in fact legal and where that money goes. Uh, according to everything I've read so far, it does say that they can use that money. So that was one of the things we discussed. Uh, another one was there is a company, uh, we're still under the name of that company. <coughs> can, uh, Alan Robinson, he would, they want to basically, there's going to be some construction work on 675, 75, and they want to, they, they approached us basically to use the uh, property behind the old schools down here to use that to um, take care of their concrete and recycle that. July through August of 2015, of course, we're looking into things that they might uh, do for the school district to be a win-win for both situations, but there's a lot of things that we still have to have answered as far as questions. We also discussed the roof fire that happened at Brucker. Um, and I want to congratulate the way that they were handled. They had this fire and within very short order, all the students there, the staff, uh, were bust over here in very short order. Um, so we really should commend everybody involved with that. I did send an email and congratulated pretty much everybody that was listed on that. It was a superintendent, I think, from the ISD that sent an email thanking us. And all the kids and the staff were brought into this room right here, I believe, and uh, we had snacks for them, and it was just handled very professionally. Nobody was hurt. Um, the repairs were being made. It was, again, a rough fire. Um, and I think you said, Carol, the kids didn't want to leave that after that. Right. They, they thought they were in an adventure and some were crying when they had to leave. So this was just a little holding area for them. They were having a good time. We played the frozen music, you know, music from Frozen, and we gave them snacks and they set little circles in here. They, they were just having a good time. They thought they were on a field trip. <laughs> Okay, we also talked about some HVAC problems that we're having, basically one at each building, at the high school, at Atkins and Thomas Wright. Uh, we're moving forward with those, and we had purchased a uh, riding floor scrubber for the building, and it's something that we leased and looked into for roughly a year to see if it was something that we wanted. Um, the next <coughs> thing we've got scheduled is at March 5th at 4.30 p.m. I'd like to add, I would like board members to contact their legislators because Representative Kelly from Thomas Township is asking the legislators to vote so that if you, so that you can't use that money to tear down a building. He figures if the building can be sold, it should be sold instead of tearing it down. So it's important to get a hold of your legislators and let them know how you feel. Because if they vote that through, then nobody will be able to tear any of those buildings down. Personnel report. The administration is recommending the following new hirees. Alicia Burdett, Specials, Thomas White and Atkins. Tanya Duby, Elementary Special Education. Jordan King, High School Social Studies. Uh, PBIS 8, Milton Adams High School. Michael Carter Atkins, Darvin Ham Jr. Atkins, Tori Jackson Atkins, Kevin Marshall High School, George Wilson Atkins. And I need a motion to approve these hirings. I'll make that motion. Oh, motion by Pat. Point of order. You have that as part of item um, 020915. Teacher student recognition. 
um, tonight, I would like to honor the following teacher from Thomas White, Chris Benlove. Ms. Benlove. Ms. Benlove was nominated by her peer teachers because she's a team player who consistently collaborates with her colleagues with focus on best practices for students. Ms. Benlove is always upbeat, helpful, and a knowledgeable resource for reliable information. Ms. Benlove.
She has always worked well with the staff members and has served on various committees and along the way. Uh, Star Mrs. Booth is uh, retiring and leaving us here at the end of the month. And I would like to thank her for all her years of service, not only to our district, but also to staff. McCarthy, the high school principal. Um, we'll start with the staff member of the month. And the staff member, before I get into a quick story, is, is Miss Cruz. Um, some know Miss Cruz Weaver, Miss Weaver, lots of references, but she tells me to call her Miss Cruz. I promise I wasn't eavesdropping, but I did overhear something no more than two hours ago. Um, she was talking with a couple students, and I, all I heard was Miss Cruz say, I don't know why I just told you that or something along those lines. And the student response is the exact reason she's the staff member of the month. She said, and I quote, because you are the mom that everybody loves. And that, that it meant a lot to me because it's the exact reason why she's the staff member of the month. Because I think of my mom and why she's great, it's because there's no description of what a mom is. There's no set criteria of what a teacher is. It's a little bit of everything. And, and just kind of doing what it takes to, to make it happen. Um, you know, in addition to the roles of being a special educator, leading our student council, she was recently voluntold, volunteered, whatever you want to call it, to participate and to lead our robotics effort, similar to me. I don't think she had any idea about robotics. It is doing a phenomenal job because she's the mom that everybody loves and doing what it takes to succeed. So, Miss Proof. some teacher input for our student of the month and it was awesome because we got several responses and nominations and, and that's good and I expect a lot of them to earn student of the month moving forward here um, but this young man was chosen for a very specific reason it, it wasn't just academic excellence and participation there, there is those things especially improving academic excellence is awesome but what one of the teachers, and the teacher is Ms. Hahn, said was that this young man has a way of lighting up the room and just when I'm having, this is the teacher talking, when I'm having a rough day, he cheers me up and, and just makes me happier. And as soon as I sent an email blast to the staff saying, you know, here's who our student of the month is, thanks for your um, suggestions, immediately several staff members were, great choice, he's awesome. He brightens up my day, too. There was no less than seven people instantly. Just great choice. So, Mr. Laverne McFadden. Nice to meet you.
while Ms. Duran is making her way up, we have um, the formal copy of the quarterly, prior to school quarterly report that the Board of Ed that the um, state makes us do, but please give it a, just a, a summary. systems of su support and that's instruction in the classroom so as I reported a couple months ago the I gotta put my glasses on for this one um, we have um, what, what went to the state is the prior priority team examined multiple proficiency data using the collaborative learning cycle dialogues what that means is the teachers we all work together to figure out um, what's going on, what went, and where we're going. Um, the, um, the data examined was five-year trends on MEET, DRAs, and NWEA. Um, everyone knows, or should know, that uh, MEET is a state test. It's changing this year, and it's going to have another name, but it's still going to be the same state sort of measurement. Then we have DRAs, which is uh, classroom measurements, and then NWEA is what we use three times a year to measure progress. The change is planned. Um, based on the findings of the data di di dialogues include a need to improve teacher understanding and knowledge of reading, math, writing, social studies, science to improve um, student achievement. Those are the areas that were found um, low by the MEET and those are the areas that we're planning to enhance. Additionally, rigorous and focused teaching methods driven by the use of data and a school-wide focus on improvement of culture and climate was determined to be needed to be um, redesigned for a rapid turnaround in student um, achievement. We are working very diligently on this, and as I said, the staff is anxious to see what the state um, comes back with. We're hoping to have it approved and be able to move forward. Thank you.
you have blue folders um, at your um, places, and those have a summary of not only the Birth to Five program that the county offers, but all of the programs that the Birth to Five, um, that the ISD offers that have to do with uh, serving children. Um, board member, our new board member, Teddy Morris, and I got a chance to visit, well, we went to the um, annual, the organization, um, Saginaw County Board Association spring, spring Dinner Meeting. Spring Dinner Meeting, where we got a very extensive presentation by the director of the Child Development Program in Saginaw County, and it was very, very impressive. And so it would be sad if we, if we as a district did not continue our <coughs> involvement with the Birth to Five program. So um, again, that amount is $16,500, and that is um, allowable under the um, 31 day grant. And when I'm done with my little overview, if we could, that is an action item. Uh, the consolidated app, that's the Title I and Title II grants, have been uh, submitted for uh, amendments. You know, they were submitted in September, and now this is the time of the year when we submitted for amendments. And we're just waiting for, for those amendments to be approved. Uh, Susan just gave an overview of the um, priority plan draft that was submitted January 20th, and we hope to get uh, response back from that on uh, February 18th. And you have the formal quarterly report in your packet. <coughs> Uh, Bridgeport, good news, more money. Bridgeport has been awarded $16,740 for the Technology Readiness Infrastructure Grant, otherwise known as TRIG. And those monies are available to school districts to upgrade their computer labs in preparation for the uh, statewide assessment. And most of the assessments, uh, Susan mentioned the um, we won't be doing the MEEP anymore. It's called MSTEP, and the state is highly encouraging districts to do that online. And uh, generally, we are ready to, to administer the MSTEP, but it would be wonderful if we could update at least one of our computer labs in the district, and $16,740 will help us to do that. Uh, it was mentioned in the finance report about the title um, the amendments, excuse me, the wireless update for Atkins and the Title I grant is going to be taking care of that. That's part of the amendment. Hasn't been approved yet, but before I even put it in the budget, um, I asked, could we, is that approvable? And we were told, yes. And so that would help. And the last thing on my um, list here is, and this is not an action item at this time, is the um, MIHIP, M-I-E-H-I-P, self-insurance. We have an issue with the um, self-insurance pool, and it's something that's gonna be re referred to the Finance Committee, and there will be action needed uh, within the next couple of weeks. And um, Mr. Facilli could answer any questions that you may have regarding that afterwards. Uh, in fact, you'll have a presentation for the Finance Committee on that. So we have to act before the next meeting? Uh, no, probably not, <coughs> meeting, but not before. But we make sure we're a finance committee before we go to the next formal board meeting. But we do have that meeting scheduled before the next meeting. Yeah, we should probably have a finance committee meeting done. Before that, too. Yes. That's what we're doing. So the only action item on my, re my update is the uh, renewal of the birth to five program in Boston. So now what do we do, Robin? Because that should have been added up when you're unfinished business. And board members are comfortable with the presentation and the information given. And you think that you could approve or not approve, that it's appropriate as long as it's discussed and open and everyone knows what they're dealing with. Someone want to make that motion? Sure, I'll make the motion to approve the $16,500 expenditure of Title 31A grant funds for the Brooklyn Five Program. Second. 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 Second.
Third support. By Pat, support by Jenny. Roll call, please. Any discussion? Huh? Any discussion? I would like to just make one comment uh, in regards to uh, the burn supply. It is, there are a lot of resources there uh, for young children, and they did show measurable data where it makes a difference if you work with kids at that age later on in school. They measured it from the beginning of their program until now. And it's just very, very important. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Roll call? Mm -hmm. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mrs. Morris? Yes. And Mrs. Sage? Yes. We can't um, hire administrators. I really wish we could because that would take care of the, the uh, Atkins and, and um, Thomas White uh, issue, but we can't, do, we can't do administrators. But there's a lot of things that we can do. And some of the expenses, I won't go into the exact amount, but some of the things that the 31A grant will be taken care of, in addition to the uh, birth to five program, is our... Um, VHS behavior specialist, uh, that's Mr. Rodriguez that was just hired. Miss um, Manning is under the 31A grant. Officer Green, we have middle school after school tutoring under the 31A grant. Uh, all of our PBIS intervention support specialists are under the 31 grant. And part, if not all, of our counselors, the high school counselor salaries will be under the 31A grant. Now, is this a grant that we can carry up to about 10% for it, or is this one of the ones yes. where we, if we don't use it, we lose it? You can carry up to 10%. Carry up 10%. One of the uh, comments from fellow Larry, uh, one of them was a paper shortage still, and I don't understand how that can continue to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get an understanding of how we can still run our schools, and it's still, this has been an ongoing issue, I believe, all year, that they've been saying that they don't have paper. And that one, I, I just don't understand. I really need to get a handle on that. So if you could get back to us on the buy that back. That's almost like breathing air that they need to pay for. If there's, a, if there's something you can make the teachers understand and we understand why we don't have it, that's a lot easier for them.
this wild that pill if there's something that makes sense. But for me, I just that boggles my mind. I'd like to have an understanding of that. That's all I got. Yeah. I just want to thank uh, Alan Ryan and Larry Brown for the comments. Um, some of those questions are questions a lot of people are asking. Hopefully, we'll have some answers on those soon. Um, Mr. I agree with Larry. I understand why we're still talking about paper. Um, but there's a legitimate reason, certainly, I'd like to know that. Another issue that I've heard uh, Mr. Brown come to the microphone for just about every meeting is the issue in the classrooms with students using cell phones and things. We have a very specific policy that states that's not allowed. It seems to me we just need to enforce the policies we have and solve what appears to be, not in the classroom, but what appears to be a pretty significant issue because it continues to come back to this board. And I'd like to ask Ms. Sully to look at that issue more. And then, um, Mrs. Lee, thank you for 30 years of service. That's for that I hope you enjoy your retirement. And then the redesign plan effort. Um, great job on that. I've read through that plan a couple of times prior to getting submitted. Uh, the folks at Acton really put a lot of uh, labor into that. And uh, I'm certain the state will come back with some positive comments. So thank you for that. That's it. Okay, I'd like to acknowledge the Atkins Choir. I don't know if anybody had a chance to see the, if you're on Facebook, they had the videos where the kids sang at Dow Center this last week that were really cute. Also, uh, State Superintendent Flanagan had on email today, wishing all the teachers a Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. And Mike, I forwarded you that message so that you could share it. Okay? And I'd like to wish everybody in here a happy Valentine's Day. And with that, the meeting will be adjourned.